Right, this is a sort of very, very short and sweet uh, unboxing and uh, review for the Hollow Sun Optic that I've just received through the post. Bought this from Imperium's eBay uh, page there, I believe an Italian supplier for Hollow Sun. Um, their optics made in the USA. Now this is a, an Aimpoint T1 style uh, optic. Now I would say a clone, but it's not really. It's it's an optic very much in its own right, um, offering a lot of features uh, similar to the T1, um, but at a fraction of the price. Um, now this is the, the HS403A. It's uh, some would argue the sort of base model, but it, it, I didn't want any of the sort of bells and whistles that some of the other mo uh, versions come with. You can get them with sort of solar um, panels on the top to allow them to run in daylight without any battery power and also um, sort of extends the battery life so to speak and you can get them with other reticles as well this is just a plain two MOA dot. Uh, the battery in this one is probably in the least convenient position uh, the other ones have them in sort of in the side or in the base but this is actually underneath the optic itself so it will go between you and the mounting uh, the, the mount that you have it on um, so yeah if you did need to change the battery it would be a pain and you wouldn't have to re-zero the site potentially um, although that said I have seen videos of these being dropped uh, from all sorts of heights and things and, and literally only losing their zero by an absolute fraction you know by an inch or two on uh, down range so it uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem however the battery does last for 50,000 hours apparently so you know, once every five years, if you have to re-zero your site, that's not too bad at all. Anyway, so this is going to be a bit of an unboxing. Uh, I'm also going to compare it to the um, uh, the EOTech clone that I'm currently using, which is a Hurricane XPS3 in tan. That's currently on my gun. Uh, so I'm going to sort of compare the two because whilst I thought the EOTech would be better for me, I think with it not be with it being a reflex site and not a hollow uh, holographic site, um, it it just doesn't really sort of work as I'd like. It's not as parallax free as I'd like and also the, the, the glass on the unit is very very glary even for a very expensive EOTech clone so um, yeah so that's what we're going to do see how the two optics stack up against each other. So this here is my Crytax CRB um, in flat dark earth and you can see the EOTech clone uh, the Hurricane XPS3 on the top so what I'll do is I will uh, take that off the gun now and I'll sort of show you qu very quickly how that looks and then we'll unbox the uh, the, aim, uh, the Holosun. So this is the Hurricane XPS3 clone that I've got. Excuse the shaky camera footage by the way I'm doing this on my mobile phone and I am shaking like Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, so we do have, uh, it's a very very nice very well built uh, optic. Uh, feels very very solid um, made out of aluminium. It's very very, it's got quite a lot of weight to it um, which some would see as a, as a negative obviously um, Obviously, the more weight you add to your gun, the worse. But it, it just sort of highlights that it is very, very well built. It feels a lot better than a, you know, many of the sort of 30 quid um, versions of these you can get. Now, as you can see there, just from that, the glass does have a lot of uh, sort of reflection and glare in it. But it's a lot better than, again, the cheaper ones. Um, this has some nice features. Um, it runs off one CR123 uh, battery. Battery life is supposed to be quite good. I haven't actually obviously run it for that long, so I don't know quite how long. Um, and yeah, it's got a, a an auto brightness feature, so um, you can either turn that on and manually adjust the brightness, or you can have it on auto brightness where it adjusts to the ambient light, and uh, uh, which is which is I found the best way to use it. Um, and then it does also switch between with this night vision button here. It does switch between red and green, which is a pretty standard feature. The other thing I quite liked about this optic, obviously, it's it's very very nice and it is very high quality. However, the one big Plus, is it did come with the protective shield, which just slides on uh, very, very quickly and easily into there, um, which is great to stop any incoming BB strikes smashing any of the glass. Uh, when it's on, if I put it in uh, manual brightness, just so you can see it sort of fully on and get the brightness right up. Um, let's try and get a decent view. So as you can see, uh, you can see the LED um, emitter there. Um, and then we come down and hopefully, we should be able to see the reticle, which you kind of can't. <laughs> there we go. Um, which is all right. Let me see if I can get a better camera angle on this. There you go. So there's the reticle there. Very nice. I mean, it works very, very well. Um, 
parallax wise it's okay as you get towards the extremes as you can see the reticle there does start to distort and move uh, I'll actually try and focus this in on a, on a, a target in a bit uh, so you can see the actual crosshair moving although it looks very parallax free at the moment it, uh, trust me it's not um, the red and green reticle of course you can see some ghosting there when I put it into green that's another feature that I really dislike on this uh, hurricane it's not so bad with the red as you can see but uh, yeah anyway so let's get the, uh, the holosun out and uh, see how it fares so here we have the holosun uh, HS403A uh, as it comes a nice neat little box uh, looks a lot more <laughs> sort of uh, a fully fledged product like the, the Hurricane packaging, I won't lie, is a little bit cheap and nasty. Uh, I mean, the optic was packaged perfectly fine inside the box, but the box did look sort of the, the marketing on it was very rubbish. This is all right. Um, open it up, and the first thing we have here is just the standard sort of manual and whatnot. And then we lift up the, uh, the sort of foam packing there. We do have a microfiber cloth for cleaning the lens, uh, silica gel uh, beads to sort of keep any moisture out of the site. And it's packaging and then we have the site in it itself so what we do have here is we have the site already pre-mounted on a on a higher uh, mount here which is how i will be using the the site um, and that gives it the most t1 style look um, in this hole here was a cr uh, normally would be a cr2032 battery that, is, that this uses but uh, for some reason it wasn't included i don't know if that's only a United States thing or whether it's a European one they don't stock it. it comes with an allen wrench for mounting and unmounting uh, I believe some spare mounting screws if I can just take those out so spare mounting screws in this little package there and also it which is a great feature it does come with the low mount if you wanted to use that instead so all your mounting options are covered which is fantastic now I'll take the optic out of the box and there it is um, it's really, really nice. Feels very, very high quality. Um, really nice finish on it as well. Um, it does have these lens caps, which I'll just take off. There we go. So as you can see, the reflective red end there and the glass there. Very, very clear glass. Now it's looking quite green there, but the, in to the naked eye, it's actually a lot less green than that. Now you may also be able to tell that it's already on. Now I have put the battery in this already. The battery actually goes <laughs> in between the, the mount and the optic. There's a little sort of uh, battery flap there um, that's accessible once you've got it off the mount. The mount there is just four screws. I don't know if you can see that, uh, which you can use that wrench for. Um, but it's very, very, very good quality. Um, if I just turn the brightness up on this. One of the great features of this optic um, is that uh, it has an auto on feature and an auto off. So after eight hours, it will turn off. And then when you pick it back up, it's got a motion sensor inside that will turn it back on. 50,000 hours battery life, um, which is amazing. Um, other features that I really, really like um, on these little screw caps on the top here, pretty standard to the, you know, sort of 8.T1 style sights, as you know. Um, you can unscrew these little caps and you match up the sort of little screwdriver head there with, with that. And what's really nice is it does include um, it does include the uh, get that in focus. It's not doing it. Can't get it in focus, but yeah, it does include the sort of uh, sight lines and everything for you to get it zeroed in properly and let you know which direction to turn it. And also, I did notice when I when you match it up, it's got a very. See if we can hear it. Very positive clicks, very audible, and you can feel those nicely. So you know exactly how you're zeroing it in, which is fantastic. Obviously, one for windage and one for elevation. Um, and yeah, it is a very, very uh, nice two and more dot. Uh, we can see it just there. It's really very nice. So let me see if I can focus in on the dot a little better. Yeah, it doesn't like it when I do it like that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll turn the brightness down. The lens, the camera obviously makes it very, very bright. I have to tell you, it actually looks a lot clearer than that um, to the naked eye. It's just obviously the camera's struggling with it. So let's compare the two. Um, you can see the two side by side there. So let's compare the two with regards to parallax. So see if I can get them sighted on something and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got both the sights set up and sort of aimed at the same point so here's the hurricane it's a bit hard to get it in focus i must say but 
Yeah. So we're focused in just on the edge of that black PC tower case there. Now as I move, I don't know if you can see that, but it distorts a lot of the, the extreme edges there of the glass, which sometimes when you're wearing face protection and you're trying to get a good cheek weld, that can really be a problem. Uh, and also, as you can see, the reticle is moving around a hell of a lot. Um, it's really not all that ideal. It's moving around quite a lot. Moving over to the Holosun. Almost completely parallax free and a much clearer picture um, in bright light. Um, it is looking very green there, but trust me, to the naked eye, that's really, really not that bad at all. Very, very clear. So for single, uh, for both eyes shooting, it's going to be great. Whereas I really struggled to get a clear view with the Hurricane XPS3 clone. Hopefully you can see that. So, let's get it mounted to the gun and see what it looks like. So there we go. There it is uh, on the top. Of the Crytek CRB, I think it looks really, really good. Yeah, I quite like the look of that. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this a run out uh, this weekend, and then for the National Airsoft event as well. Um, yeah, it just looks sick. And uh, yeah, so price difference between the two. Now they're both these optics aren't cheap. The Hurricane XPS3 was about 120 quid. Uh, this thing, uh, this Holosun, Sun, annoyingly. Uh, would have been a similar price at about 130 um, pre-Brexit, but then post-Brexit it's gone up about 25 quid. Um, but so far, I highly recommend it. Very high quality optic. I do have a uh, lens, guns modify lens protector that will go on here that will be clear. That will uh, hopefully protect the glass from any incoming BB strikes. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to using it. So I hope you found this uh, review unboxing sort of useful or informative. And uh, yeah. There you go, the Holosun HS403A.